and we will go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, again, welcome and thank you for joining our capacity for non capacity building for nonprofits webinar. I am India Good, the Community and Partnership Engagement Vista for the Collaborative. The Collaborative's mission is to close the wealth gap in North Carolina by ensuring that everyone has a pathway to prosperity. Just before we start, we have a few housekeeping announcements. This webinar is being recorded and can be accessed later on. This is a group discussion. However, all webinar attendees are muted at the start to ensure sound quality. Feel free to share comments or ask questions by using the Q&A feature below. We want you to maximize your webinar experience. You don't need to be an expert. We're all here to learn. We welcome your questions and your insights. So please get comfortable and engage with us. And throughout the program, please be considering ways that an AmeriCorps VISTA can support your work. For our agenda today, we will begin our program by starting with some context around VISTA and quickly move into a discussion on the specifics of bringing a VISTA on board to serve at your site. Now, I will turn it over to Ebony Griffin, who will be leading today's discussion. Thanks, India. Hello, everyone. My name is Ebony, and I am the VISTA leader for the Collaborative. I am glad you all could join us. Today's discussion will focus on the VISTA component of AmeriCorps. Today, you will leave with an understanding of what AmeriCorps VISTA is and how your organizations and others can get involved. We're going to start with the program poll to get a better understanding of who we have on the call. How familiar are you with AmeriCorps VISTA. I am not all, at all familiar with this program. I have heard of AmeriCorps and have a general understanding of it. I am an AmeriCorps VISTA alum. I have hosted or managed an AmeriCorps VISTA. If your answer is other, please share more in the chat box. Now, please take the time to answer the question on your screen. The responses are coming in. I'm going to give everyone a few more moments to share their answers. We'll be closing the poll in three, two, one. Thank you all for sharing. It looks like most of you are not familiar with the program and or have heard of AmeriCorps. So let's start our discussion with the Collaborative Executive Director, Marquita Robertson. I was muted, sorry about that. Um, hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be talking with all of you um, today about one of my favorite programs at the Collaborative, AmeriCorps VISTA. The Collaborative has several different programs and initiatives to support our overall mission to address wealth inequities and providing nonprofits across North Carolina with a full-time paid VISTA for a year has been one of the most impactful. Last year, our VISTA supported nearly 9,000 adults in job placement programs work with 175,000 youth and manage 122 community volunteers. And these are just a few of the impact numbers. These are a few of the organizations that we've worked with and these are all North Carolina organizations listed on the screen. This diagram um, illustrates how we support nonprofits in hosting a VISTA. As you can see, VISTA falls under AmeriCorps and the collaborative plays an intermediary role or sponsoring organization 
for um, our AmeriCorps VISTA program. We coordinate with the regional office to handle the VISTA application. We handle the program grant and administration for our organizations. And our member organizations that bring on the VISTAs are called VISTA subsites. And the subsite supervisor is the person at your organization that will be managing the VISTA. What is a VISTA? Ah, that's a good question. VISTA stands for Volunteers in Service to America. VISTA is a mission-driven program designed to build capacity in nonprofits and communities working with low-income families. The core principles center around moving communities out of poverty rather than making poverty more tolerable through short-term services by engaging in planning, development, and implementation of projects. You mentioned that this is build capacity. What does that mean? Yes, this is build capacity. If you haven't already heard this, this is can do the following. They can research and apply for new funding sources like grants or in-kind donations. They can recruit and train long-term community volunteers. They can establish and cultivate new partnerships with donors, media, and community stakeholders. Design and implement databases to track donors and volunteers. They can do things like create templates for outreach and event planning and much more. VISTA is not direct service. VISTA is not hiring a receptionist or an assistant. In other words, you can bring a VISTA on to be your, you cannot bring a VISTA on to be your receptionist, but you can bring a VISTA on to help your organization build out a program, develop a plan for a program or project, write and apply for grants. VISTA cannot be your credit counselor but they can build capacity for your credit counseling and related programs by improving the efficiency in your education and outreach and your counseling processes to help folks manage their credit, obtain and maintain homeownership, et cetera. They can also do things like research and launching a credit counseling collaborative. How have this is served in North Carolina specifically? So this has have officially addressed challenges like education, equity, disaster response, and community development in North Carolina. The numbers at the bottom of your screen represent some of the impact AmeriCorps in North Carolina, um, that AmeriCorps Business in North Carolina has done. This is also very hands-on during the pandemic, helping and supporting organizations and um, biz, small businesses with the rapid refund loan processing, and I share that because this is our um, reactive. When things happen or things are going on in our communities, this is our, our um, well positioned to respond and support the organization that they're serving at to address these needs. How do the VISTAs themselves benefit? So to serve as an AmeriCorps VISTA is a great sacrifice. The VISTA's living allowance is set at the area poverty level and really only covers their basic needs. And I share and I stress this, and you'll hear me do this um, as we continue the conversation, because it's important to communicate this when you're communicating for a VISTA for your organization and explaining the position. And for myself and our site um, supervisors and organizations, so that we can continue to appreciate the sacrifice that they're that, that this is our making during our general interactions with our business. With that said, these are some of the benefits that this has received throughout their service. Some worth noting are the education award that is set at the annual Pell Grant um, each year, and this is on top of their living allowance. They also get health care benefits, and they also receive a non-competitive advantage for federal jobs after they end their service for a year. What are the eligibility requirements for an organization to host an AmeriCorps VISTA? So this is a question we get all the time. In short, any nonprofit that works or works involves um, supporting low-income families to move them out of poverty are eligible to host an AmeriCorps VISTA. As long as the VISTA is being brought on to build capacity and not being brought on to do direct service. With that said, there's a non-competitive and application vetting process that all um, participating sites must go through. What are the expectations of nonprofit 
interested in hosting an AmeriCorps VISTA? So VISTAs need the support and guidance of their supervisors. Every VISTA is different. Some are local um, and they know the community, they know their Carolina, and then they know the city that they're in. They might also know the clients that you're serving. They may have lived experiences. Others are national recruits and they may know nothing about the area that they're in. They also may not share the experience that of the clients that you're serving. And so um, support from you could look like um, community um, information, um, helping them to understand and familiarize themselves with clients, with your partnering organizations. Also um, supporting them to understand your organization overall, helping them to understand your board, your mission, and all of that stuff. The quality of the support that you provide at the beginning or during your onboarding really has a great impact in the success of the service and your business experience um, throughout the throughout the year. Participating organizations or subsites or managers, um, site supervisors will handle the VISTA onboarding and orientation and training. Um, they also provide workspace supplies and equipment for the VISTAs. They also supervise the VISTA and provide guidance, support, and counseling and coaching throughout the year. They also monitor the VISTAs attendance and leave. Thank you, Marquita. Now we're going to take the time and answer a poll for the quick questions to see what support that you would need hosting an AmeriCorps VISTA. Getting started, managing another individual, finding space for another individual, executing knowledge transfer. If other, please specify in the chat. Now please take the time to answer the question on your screen. The responses are coming in. We're going to take a few more moments to allow others to share their responses. Thank you for sharing. It looks like majority of you will need support with getting started and executing knowledge transfer. Let's jump back into discussion. How does the collaborative support site in bringing on a VISTA? So the collaborative is your very intimate partner throughout this process. We look very much like a staffing agency for VISTA. We handle all the administration of the program from start to finish as illustrated in the diagram at the beginning of the webinar. The collaborative provides overall project training and orient VISTAs and site supervisors, provide professional development opportunities and support for VISTAs, secures resources for the smooth, smooth and effective um, execution of the project, manages biweekly payroll information, and assists with the recruitment. We also perform, perform annual monitoring visits and provide annual project timelines. And in response to the poll that just came in, the, the, pro, the collaborative also provides onboarding and um, planning that is very helpful for sites who are new and looking to get started with the VISTA. We first will have an initial consultation and then we'll walk through what you're interested in your VISTA doing. And then we um, develop a VAD, which is a VISTA assignment description, which um, really outlines the plans for your VISTA. It is really beneficial 
to both the sites and the business coming in and helping to get it started and planned and that sort of thing. We also provide an onboarding kit that you personalize and um, it really walks you through how to bring the VISTA into your organization. We're also very responsive to our partners' needs. We also have sites that need additional support with handling an issue um, that may arise with their VISTA or things that they need to do to support a VISTA through challenges. Whatever the issue or situation is with a VISTA at your site, the collaborative will support and provide guidance to get you and your VISTA through it. That's why we, why we are here. That's what we um, want to do. I um, largely support the, the supervisors or you folks that are on the call and our VISTA leader works very, very closely with the VISTAs to support them. Do VISTAs have to report, report to site or can they work remote? So our VISTAs follow their host site's office policies. If the site is working remotely, the VISTA works remotely. If the site reports to the office daily, so does the VISTA. There are some sites that utilize a hybrid schedule with a few days in the office and some remote. In short, the VISTA um, will follow your policies. So if your site is remote, you are expected to provide your VISTA with the resources and the materials to work from home or serve from home. Um, it also requires you as a site supervisor to be more hands-on with communication and project guidance because they're not um, in the office. And, um, and we can support you through that and, um, you know, locating and um, getting resources together to support your VISTA um, working remote. We should help with that as well. What is the timeline for bringing a VISTA on board? So in the spring, we start our VISTA recruitment. We're about to ramp up our VISTA recruitment now for this upcoming year. Um, in the summer is when we see our VISTAs begin. In the fall, which is most applicable for you on the phone, is our application period for host sites. Organizations on this Zoom that plan to host a VISTA will apply during this time, September to November 2024, to host a VISTA in 2025. Um, it's also when the VISTAs that are just started in the summertime, began their professional development. And in the winter, um, we start to prepare for upcoming VISTA recruitment, which is where we are in this upcoming cycle. Let's say someone is interested in hosting a VISTA. What should their next steps be? So the next steps would be a consultation and application. Schedule a virtual consultation with me between now and June. And then each site must complete an application as part of the review and vetting process before August 31st, 2024. Each site is required to sign an MOU that outlines much of what we discussed today and each site contributes a cost share. So, and then we work with the sites to develop a VISTA assignment description, which is the BAD, which outlines in great detail your plans for your VISTA, how you expect them to achieve that, and so forth. And I work with you um, to do that. You don't have to do that on your own. And then we start to recruit and hire for the position. And there's also training for supervisors as well. So, and then when the VISTA start, you provided information to support you and your organization to prepare for the VISTA. And while in service, you're expected to supervise the VISTA and support the VISTA's professional development. Now we're going to take a few questions from our audience, but we will start from some of the questions that were submitted during this session. How competitive is the process? So the, the process to secure AmeriCorps VISTA is not um, competitive. We um, work with organizations that work and serve low-income families. The work that you're bringing a VISTA on, we make sure that it is capacity, true capacity building work and not direct service work. And we also, um, you know, there's a vetting process, you know, you have to be a 501c3 or a local government organization. We verify that to make sure that that is, um, that, that is in line with what we do. And um, we also make sure that you have things in place to bring a VISTA on board and to support a VISTA. And so um, most organizations 
that reach out to us usually um, very quickly through our consultation, we can identify if this makes sense for them or if it doesn't, it usually does. Um, and if so, we just move through with the process. What qualifications or credentials do VISTAs have? So um, our, that really depends on the site. Um, but before, um, I would say before 2021, we required that all our AmeriCorps VISTAs had um, a college degree. And that is because there is some experience with organization, um, computer skills and time management, and some things that a lot of this is gained through having four years of college. Um, recruitment has been increasingly challenging over the past few years, and now we only require that VISTAs have some college experience. Um, with that said, VISTAs can be um, 18 to 100. There is, you know, as long as you're 18, you can be an AmeriCorps VISTA. So we do get some seasoned VISTAs. We get a lot of AmeriCorps VISTAs that have graduated. Um, I think all of our VISTAs now have um, have have a high school, I mean, excuse me, have a college degree. Um, so that's really the qualifications. VISTAs also have to be, um, they have to be legal United States residents. Um, and so there is some things that they have to, that there's some verification things that happen on that end. You, a school visa, I know right off does not count. You have to be like a legal resident. Um, so good question though. Does the agency have to pay any portion of the volunteer salary? No, the agency does not pay a portion of the salary. The AmeriCorps businesses get about twenty two to twenty three thousand dollars a year in a form of a living allowance. They get health care benefits and they get um an end of service awards in the award in the form of either an education award, which is about seven six to seven thousand dollars is based off of the annual Pell Grant, or um they can get a end of service stipend, which is between $1,500 to $2,000. Um, and so that is what, that is the VISTA's um, pay that they receive. Also, um, there is some child care assistance that is available if it applies. There is some relocation that's available if it applies to the specific VISTA. Um, the collaborative pays a call share to participate on the national, as part of the national program, that cost share is divided amongst our VISTA sites. And that is received, that is um, invoiced to our host sites in the form of a cost share. And so there isn't really like a percentage of that that goes to the VISTA's living allowance and that sort of thing, because there are some years that VISTA's get living allowance increases during the middle of the program, we have nothing to do with that and it doesn't impact um, the cost share at all. But good question. These are good questions. We have another one that, uh, oh, we have Pierre Norwood that wants to ask a question. You can go ahead. Hey there, um, I was just wondering, so with the application process for the nonprofits, is there a priority given to any specific industry? Is it anything that like the AmeriCorps program is seeking to support, you know, more or have priority in that over, you know, something else? So like maybe housing or workforce development, or is there any, is it just kind of broad? It's it's broad. It, it is very, very broad. Um, and to give an example, we have um, a micro enterprise um, site that's involved with us now. We also has a site, have a site that is focused on um, supporting foster care children across North Carolina, helping them to be move into um, it, that transition from foster care to adulthood, which is largely financial, being financially independent. Um, and then there's our site, which is asset building. Um, and then there's another site that is focused on financial um, 
literacy and for supporting teachers with financial literacy and then another that so it varies which is um great for North Carolina and it was we were intentional about not um focusing on different on a specific um a specific focus area because we wanted to make this broad and a service to all nonprofits in North Carolina. So no, if you're supporting um if you're supporting financial inclusion and the work that you anticipate a VISTA does supports it, um we welcome you and I and I we appreciate the variety um and the innovation that some of our sites bring to our projects. Thank you. Thank you, Tierra. Do we have any other questions that you guys would like to ask? Um, one last question. So with the process, I know you said everyone has to go through the application process, and I'm just wondering, so how long once you apply um, to be a part of this and to get a visa, what is the length of time that it takes to actually implement that? So are we looking at, you know, six months or 30 days or? So this, um, it's a little different this year um, than it has been in previous years. So right now we can, we will be accepting applications until August 31st. And this is to host the VISTA in 2025. Um, in previous years, that um, when that time period has been a little shorter, but because um, this is a federal program and there has been some um, changes with the with the timeline on the national level, we um, that is it. So we're going to walk through the timeline in just the we already walked through the timeline actually, but um, so. Right now, um, if you turn an application in in August, we will work with you as soon as you turn it in to um, to talk about your project, get things in place for a plan, and we can absolutely um, begin recruiting as soon as that starts to happen. And you will your vista will probably begin the next year, twenty twenty five, in May or June of the following year. We have another thank question. You. Um, thank you, Tara. We have another question, and uh, it is from Beverly Park. She said, are there any limitations to the location, geographic area for placement of a VISTA? So we service all of North Carolina. So if you're in North Carolina, we can work with you. If you're outside of North Carolina, um, I can connect you with the regional office and she could try to connect you with someone in your area, but we're service. We, our placement is anywhere in North Carolina. And Beverly, are, where are you located, Beverly? And you could put it in the chat. And so, well, I'll go ahead and, you're in North Carolina, okay. Yep, you're good. So, and I see Joyce, my good friend, my good, good friend from Louisiana, um, you know, uh, is saying that she could use one here in Louisiana. And we're going to try to connect you with a site in Louisiana, Joyce, that um, may be able to support the great work of the Middleburg Institute. Okay. Sand Hills, that uh, works. One last question. We have um, down at the bottom. It says, I'm in rural NC. Is a TA support available in filling out an application to host the VISTA? Um, so the application, and India, can you drop the application in the chat real quick? So the application um, is a one-page, very straightforward application. Um, not uh, there's not there is no there's not really any technical um, assistance that 
is needed for this application. The collaborative completes the federal application based off of the information provided in your application. So we handle the federal application, which is not fun. I'm in the process of doing that now for um, April or March of this year. Um, and so there's not a lot of technic there's not a lot of technicality that goes into that. India, um, can you post the link? It just posted the name. Actually, I can post the link. So here's the link to the federal application. To the I mean to the application that you need. Any other questions? And I will actually share my screen so you guys can see the application. I'm gonna take it from you, Isabella. So you can see the application. Oh, I can't. Okay. Oh, no, I can't. So this is the application to um, get an AmeriCorps VISTA, and it's very straightforward. Your organization name, um, overview, the street address, do you plan for the VISTA to serve at the site full, uh, above, um, who are your community partners, What's the mission? What counties do you serve? How your organization benefit? Tell us your community, how your community will benefit, how the sandwich persons in your community will benefit, why, and that's really it. So it's a very straightforward application. Any questions? <clears throat> that looks like that's all we have, Marquita. Thank you. All right. So, all right. So, it looks like you guys are going to get some time back today. So, thank you all for joining the Zoom today. And a special thank you to all of our VISTAs, Ebony, for facilitating this discussion, India, for the welcome and managing the chat, and Isabella for handling the production. Um, with our Zoom. And as discussed, if you're interested in learning more, please schedule a consultation with me between now and June. The link is in your chat. It will be sent via email. And before closing, I want to share that everything that you've seen today was done by Avista, from the email marketing to the video and the email marketing to the coordination of the Zoom, all of that. So the collaborative is a true testament of the wonderful work of Avista. And um, the vistas that help me with this are on the phone, are on the Zoom, their camera, Isabella, with their cameras on. And I just wanted to get a shout out to them. Um, and this is the power of Vista. So if your organization needs to build capacity, you got some great work that needs some enhancement, get yourself a Vista. And thank y'all for your time today. Thank you. Thank y'all. And um, Courtney Williams is actually who told Freedom Organization about y'all. So just wanted to shout her out because I know she's a current visa. Um, but thank y'all for this. And I look forward um, to applying and hopefully being able to participate in the program.